Okay, so in the previous video, I had on the board all those formulas for the double angles and the half angles. So you want to refer back to those. Those are going to be uh, in your notes. We're going to use them in order to answer this question here. Now, we have the double angles they want us to find down below here. We also have some half angles they want us to find also. So the, uh, the ones up here, these are actually single angles, and so these are actually a review from a previous section where we're just going to use our SOHCAHTOA definitions to fill those in. So that's what we want to start with because these definitions down here, they rely on sines and cosines and definitions up there. So we first want to find uh, those first before doing the ones down below. We need to draw the triangle on this one. Now it tells us that the triangle is in second quadrant because it's between 90 and 180. We're also given cosine is equal to negative 0.8. I'm going to make this negative 0.8 divided by 1 because that way I'll have two sides to put on my triangle. So that's the first thing I'll do is draw the triangle. I'll just do that over here. And we're drawing that in the second quadrant. And from the definition of cosine, that's the adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is going to be this side. Hypotenuse is here. Hypotenuse is always positive. You're talking about the negative x-axis, so that's why that's negative 0.8. And then we want to use Pythagorean Theorem to find the third side. That way we can fill these in here. Okay, so if we do that, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, in this case, the c is 1. That's your longest side of the triangle opposite the right angle. That's here. And then we have the negative 0.8 will go in here. And then we're solving for the, the missing side. So when you square that, you're going to get 0.64 plus b squared uh, equals 1. Subtract, and you get 0.36. And then when you square root both sides, you do get plus or minus 0.6. However, because we're talking about this value, this is above the x-axis, so we know that's going to have to be positive. So we're going to put 0.6 in for that one. Now we have all three sides of our triangle complete. We're ready now to answer these questions by using trig definitions. So first, sine theta is equal to opposite. The angle we have here is measured from the x-axis, so that's the angle we're referring to. Opposite that angle is across the triangle from that one. This is going to be 0 0.6. Uh, for your cosecant, uh, we need to use the definition of the reciprocal, so it's going to be 1 over 0 0.6. So if we do uh, 1, we'll do that over here. Cosecant theta is equal to 1 over 0 0.6, and if we do that, we're going to get 1.67. In the notes, it originally said that we want to round our answers to two decimal places, so that's what we're going to do for everything here. Now, 0.8, that could, be, could have been written as a fraction, but again, because it originally gave, it that, it gave us that as a, neg uh, as a decimal, and the uh, notes said to round to two places, we'll keep everything all in terms of decimals. So 1.67 uh, will be here. Next one, tangent. Tangent is uh, opposite over adjacent, so tan is equal to... 0.6 divided by negative 0.8, and that's negative 0.75 if you were to divide that. So negative 0.75 is our tangent. Okay, so we got that one. Uh, cotangent is the reciprocal of this one. So we're going to do 1 over negative 0.75, or we could have done negative 0.8 over 0.6, either one of those. And if we do that, that you're going to get negative 1.33. So that's our cotangent value. Secant would be the reciprocal of the original one. So secant theta is equal to 1 over negative 0.8. So if we work this out, we get negative 1.25. So that's going to be our secant value right there. So these are all the regular values that we have complete. And so I'm going to clear this board so we can do the, the other ones. You always want to do the first five because, again, these definitions down below will involve the ones up above. So the first thing we're going to do now, the next thing, uh, is the sine uh, 2 theta. So, again, the, you want to refer back to those uh, formulas in your notes, but I'll go ahead and rewrite the one for the ones that I'm using up here. There's only one formula for sine 2 theta, and that's this one, 2 sine theta cosine theta. So this part, when we fill this in, these two things are actually going to come directly from what we've already completed already. These are, we can just go ahead and substitute those right in 
for all this. So all of sine theta is going to get replaced with the decimal that goes along with it. We said that sine theta was 0.6 from our triangle, so we'll put all that in here. For cosine, that's going to be the original one that they gave us, so we have numbers for both of these. Okay, so we're going to do 2 sine theta is going to be 0.6, cosine is negative 0.8. So, we, so all we're doing is we're filling this all in, and then we're going to multiply it out to uh, get the answer. And if you multiply that out, uh, you're going to get negative 0.96. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the value we'll get for sine of 2 theta. So that one's complete. Next, we want to look at cosine 2 theta. Now cosine 2 theta, if you look in your notes, there's actually three different formulas for that. There's a cosine squared minus sine squared. There's a 1 minus 2 sine squared or 2 cosine squared minus 1. We have all three of those that we can use. I'm going to use the one that involves cosine since I know that one's going to be correct. They gave us, if you can use a formula that involves the given one, then that's going to be better because you know that that number uh, is correct. So uh, if I do that, I'm, I'm going to use cosine 2 theta is equal to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. So for this, I'm going to put in the cosine value that was originally given to me. That's negative 0.8. I'll square that one. And then that's going to give me my value for cosine 2 theta. So if we work this out, uh, we're going to get on this 2. This is going to be 0.64 minus 1. And if we work this out, we should get uh, 0 0.28. 0 0.28 we should get for this one. So 0 0.28 is the value for cosine uh, 2 theta. Now that we have this complete, we're ready now to do uh, tangent 2 theta. Now tangent 2 theta, there's a couple different ways that you could do it. There's a formula uh, that I gave in my notes specifically for tangent 2 theta and that's how I did it uh, in the notes. But I want to show you there's also another way of doing it. The other way of doing it is using a different definition for tangent 2 theta. There's tangent 2 theta, you can actually write that as sine of 2 theta over cosine 2 theta. Just how sine over cosine is regular, if you have double angles, that also works as well. So because of that, we actually have another way of calculating tangent 2 theta. We can just use our two previous answers that we did before. We already found both of those. So you can do negative 0.96 divided by 0.28. And this will get you the same answer as was in the notes, and that was negative 3.43. Okay. So same answer is the one, uh, if you're using the formula, you get the same answer. Now, now this is nice because we're only putting in two numbers. However, the disadvantage of it is, unfortunately, if you got, got a mistake in one of these, that means that your tangent's going to be wrong also. So it's kind of something to take in consideration. Um, if we use the other tangent formula, it's going to use negative 0.75. So either way, uh, you'll get the right answer again. But I just wanted to show you another option for getting tangent 2 theta. So we've done, we've done all these, all the double angles are complete. Okay, so now let's take care of the half angles. So for the half angle sine theta over 2, the formula for it is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 2. We notice that there's a plus or minus in this one, and what this means is that we have to choose whether it's a positive or a negative. You don't want to put down on your answer plus or minus because that's not complete. We have to decide whether it's positive or negative. In order to do that, we need to figure out which quadrant theta over 2 is in. Once we know what quadrant that's in, then we can make a determination based on our trig function of sine. We can tell if sine is positive or negative in that particular quadrant. So there's a process for figuring out which quadrant theta over 2 is in, and that involves the original statement that, that's given here. So we're going to put 90 less than theta less than 180. This is our original statement we started out with. I want to create a theta over 2 in the middle, and that's going to allow me to determine which quadrant it's in. So I'm going to divide this by 2. Now if I divide this by 2, I have to do the other ones divide by 2, and I get that theta over 2 is between 45 and 90. So I, I've solved that equation, and this is exactly what it's saying now for theta over 2. It says that theta over 2, that angle, is between 45 and 90. That's the first quadrant. So I know that uh, if I look at sine in the first quadrant, we know that from the all students take calculus, the sine chart, everything should be positive in the first quadrant. That means that sine 
is got to be positive in the first quadrant, which means that I now I know for sure that if sine's positive in this quadrant where theta over 2 is, I can make the determination that that's going to be a plus. So now that I have that determined, I'm ready now to plug in the numbers. You always want to make sure you figure out which quadrant it's in first before you put any numbers in. So now that we have that complete, we're ready to uh, fill the number in. This is 1 minus negative 0.8. Uh, divided by 2. Double negative here, you got to be careful. Negative in the formula and negative in the number itself. And then we're going to simplify this. So you're going to get 1 plus uh, 0.8, so 1.8 divided by 2. If we divide that, we get the square root of 0.9. Now, the square root of 0.9, you would think it would, might be uh, 0.3, but it's not. When you, when you work that out, calculator, you're going to get 0.95 actually for the, the value. So this is going to go in here for sine of theta over 2. So we, we've done all this process for that, and now we're going to do the same thing for tangent theta over 2. Now in the, in the notes, there is one version I gave that has a plus or minus with the tangent theta over 2. However, I don't recommend using that one because then we have to go through the same process by working with this angle and finding out where if tangent's positive or negative in that quadrant. Instead of doing that, we're going to use the other versions of tangent, which are going to be this one here. We have the sine or tangent theta over 2 is sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. This is the, the version that we want to use. We're going to do this one because there's no pluses or minuses involved here. So if the formula itself does not involve a plus or minus, that means you don't have to go through that whole process. In fact, out of all the ones that you see here, the only ones we have to do that process by working with this is this one. If it's either sine theta over 2 or cosine theta over 2, those are the only times that you have to do this process and work with that original inequality statement. All the other ones, whatever sign that you get from the formula, that's going to be the, the answer for the whole thing. Even our double angles. The double angles, we don't have to worry about plus or minus either. You just plug it into the formula and whatever sign that you get here, whether positive, positive or negative, it's automatically going to work out. So that one we don't need to worry anymore about. Uh, or signs. So this one, we're just going to plug the numbers directly in. Whatever we get for the answer, that's going to be it. So for this, sine theta is going to be 0 0.6. And then the bottom, we have 1 plus your cosine. Cosine is going to be negative 0.8. And then that's going to give us 0 0.6 divided by, this will be 0.2. And then when you divide this, we actually get a whole number this time. We get 3. So that's our answer for uh, tangent theta over 2. So now we've finally completed all these. We got all the um, uh, double angles and half angles that are in there. So uh, the, the, the problem that you'll click on after this, we have a little bit harder because now we're going to have one that deals with uh, square roots.